Amy. Welcome to Hermit Woods, where there's a story in every bottle. Hey, I think we're I think we're live. Oh yeah. We're live. Are you kidding me? Are we live? Is it Possibly, but I'm not sure if people can hear us. I can hear Hello. us. Yeah. So. Yeah. We are I can hear it. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Wait a minute. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Is it the 2023? I think it's my headphones. 2020, 2023. I can't. No, we're here. Like this. I think we're good. So maybe we should have headphones and we'll just cry there. I did, yeah. So we're we're on a double split screen mode. Is that that's that that's new for twenty? Yeah, we'll just put us on the whole screen there. We don't need the food. Oh yeah. Food up there. Just just we'll get this together. Don't worry. You know Woo. we do this every week. If we were all <laughs> organized and ready to go when the show opened up at five thirty, well that would there, clearly be would be something wrong. It would have nothing to do with us. It'd be another show. That would not be fun. Yeah. So, but now we are ready. Are we ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Chef Travis. Cheers. 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 Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. And cheers to the crowd. Welcome to 2020. Maybe by 2024 we will have the sound. No fun. We're drinking. That's the problem. We start drinking before we set the show off. Whoops. So, cheers, everybody. So, a couple things before we get started. As always, I believe right under Chuck. No, it's me. Under Marika. I'm sorry. Right I'm here. backwards. That's why. So, under Marika yeah. is the subscribe button for the YouTube channel. Please subscribe. That way, you'll get notified every time we go live. And we do that every Monday at 5 30. And we also do it randomly from odd spots around the planet whether that be skiing or in the middle of an ocean somewhere. So uh, we'd love to love to have you join us when we do. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to subscribe to our Facebook channel, there's a little bell somewhere on the screen. i, I got to find out where that bell is. Anyway, find that little bell, and you hit it, and it, it allows you to subscribe to our, uh, our Facebook channel, and we will also get notified when we go live. And if you're joining us today for the very first time, Welcome, and please uh, take the opportunity to ask questions, make comments. Um, we welcome them, and we will do our best to answer them. Uh, either Marika will answer them directly, or we will answer them live if it's uh, if, if they're pertinent to the to the show. So, ask any questions you like, and let us know you're here by by putting a comment in the comment section. Then we see that you're here, and we can say hello. And uh, if you like this broadcast, please uh, share it with your friends, like it. Um, and uh, and we will we will get more visitors down the road, I guess. And we will say that again, right at the end of the show. We will remind people. Yes, if you stick with us to the end, the show today that they should share it, right? That's in 2023. We're starting that. Wow. So That's we're going right. to be consistent with that. We're going to try anyway. <laughs> Marika, remember, keep us honest out there. Don't send us a comment if we're not being by, consistent. By 2024, we'll have it down. <laughs> yes, positively, yeah. for sure, maybe. So then, what? So what are we doing here? Today? Well, look at this. We got a whole bunch of food. We have a hot plate in front of us. And I know. I'm hungry. Guy dressed like a chef. Oh, he's a chef. Oh. This is Chef Travis. Oh, Everybody says, knows Chef Travis. It says Travis. Chef on there. Oh, oh it does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, today is a cooking show. Imagine that we're doing a cooking show. This Love is our it. second or third. Third, yeah. Show. You did one. Because we did. Matt we did, did the one. mussels. Yeah. We did yeah. mussels Matt with Blake Husway, and then Matt did one with his with his crepes. Travis is going to going to take the show over. So. We decided today, because Travis came up with this really great prefix menu, we have been offering for all of our music nights 
on Thursday night. So if you want to come see a great show on our stage on Thursday evenings, you can choose to just buy a ticket for the show and come here and order off our menu like you always have. Or now you can buy a dinner and a show with a prefix menu, which Travis has prepared for us. And we thought it would be fun to prepare that prefix menu here on the show yep. so that we can have an opportunity to talk about it and uh, make and everybody aware it. of this fun prefix <laughs> menu. And you've been having it. You've had it a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I haven't eaten through the whole thing. I think I, I've had some of it sort of in the test kitchen zone, but uh, I don't think I've never had the that, that lovely thing right by Chuck over there. So. Mm -hmm. good. We're going to have to eat all the goodies. Yeah. 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 All, the uh, three of them are in front of you that are already preset, and then we're going to make the uh, the shrimp dish right here. So everything is already made mm -hmm. except the shrimp dish, and that's except what you're going yep. to teach everybody how yep. to cook that yep. magic shrimp, yes. whatever that is that you do to it. <laughs> and the first – well, we should start then before you start cooking the shrimp, right? We should start mm -hmm. with the first item that one yes. would get served, yep. which is not the shrimp, right? Right. Tell, tell us course. about the menu. So the menu is four courses. Um, two of them are pretty small bites, and then you get into the braised short rib slider mm. that is kind of a bigger bite, and then we end with the apple pie pocket. So it's four courses, two of them more like appetizers, one kind of like an entree but not as big as an entree, and then obviously dessert to close. Um, so we have a sweet potato. So it's a roasted sweet potato. And then we made a goat cheese that has apples and cranberries in it. It's topped with toasted sesame seeds. And that's the first course. Second course. Little plates. I'll be right back. Second yeah. course. So that's the first course. One? For the. And it's the, the, yep. the goat cheese. So if you this, show this. it, Travis, hold it right over the pan. Like it's a great yeah. spot. Oh, there we yep. go. Bring I'm going to go grab us some yeah. napkins. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and, and Marika's getting us some dishes we did not. <laughs> By 2024, we'll know that we need dishes to serve our food. So the goat cheese is from where for this? The this. goat cheese is from, hold on, let me go over right here. Vermont Farmstead. Hold on. I'm trying to think. Goat cheese, I buy it so much, I don't even, it's from Vermont. Vermont it's Creamery. Creamery. Vermont Creamery. There's oh, like okay. four, it's four that are like, start with Vermont. And then it's a different end. I believe Farm it is. Farm stand. Get a lot of cheese from yes. I believe the goat cheese Vermont. is Vermont Creamery. <laughs> yeah. Creamery. The Tilsit and the Winterdale is Vermont Farmstead. Yeah. yeah. So goat cheese from Vermont Creamery. Yep. All right. Yeah. Here's for you apples. and Travis. Apples. Apples? Diced apples. Yep. And then the, the topping is... So that's a, a toasted sesame seed. A toasted sesame seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious. It has a really nice. Um, uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Oh, you did. Kind of savory, rich yes, cheese. Um, goat cheesy flavor. And it pairs really well with um, arrow crab apples. That's not the choice of, choice of one. Yeah, did we, I think we knocked the camera. Oh, we did. How did oh we, my goodness! Uh, how did we do that? We did. I think that's since we duct taped the camera in place. <laughs> it's a great angle on Travis. It's kind of funky. Perfect. Can you maybe see if you can. Hi, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's a duct tape. Well, we'll go back to the front layout anyway. Uh, so. uh, front layout of Chuck, we'll get a view of Chuck fixing the camera. <laughs> well, now I'm going to put it on just so I can see what's going on. A little further tipped forward. It, yeah, it's got to go this way more. Yep. So. This way. It's got to be flatter. Yeah. And a little more. A little more. Uh, so Gorilla Tape, yeah. although usually does exactly what you want it to do. That's good. Wait, a little crooked, uh, but it's... Occasionally, angular, right? it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's evidenced by... This is a complicated order. Yes. Oh, oh. that? Yeah, no. No, we no. lost it again. I'm uh, to just skip the upper camera. <laughs> it works if, if Travis holds things directly above the pan. Oh, oh, yeah. Right there. That's lovely. Perfect. Perfect. If it stays. Anyway, but I'm nice going back job. to the front view. Eat this. While you're yeah, right. It. So uh, heirloom crab apple is the wine of choice with this because it has the acidity and kind of off dry character to, to offset the goat cheese yes. creaminess and the textures. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful. Because so the other thing with the uh, fixed price menu uh, at we have at the uh, at the show is that you get a wine pairing with it. So you get a sampler of wine. Comes with a little fight. A little flight that goes with it and it's it's awesome it's a great experience so you get the hermit woods tasting experience at both wine and food yeah 
And I have to say, the crab apple goes splendidly with this. It really does. It goes very nice. I love the crunch of the sesame seeds on top. Because it's fun. Yeah, using a sweet potato instead of crostini is a, I don't know, it's mm. a unique fun spin on things. Mm. But it does make it, it's not as... It's not as crunchy as a crostini would be. So you get a little bit of extra crunch from the sesame seeds. Mm, yeah. And the, the appleiness in there is actually kind of kind of nice with the crab apple. A little pop of the lemon mm. zest. Oh. Where is that lemon zest, zest again? Yeah. Hmm? Where is the apple? It's in the goat cheese. Chopped so we the mix the goat cheese with cranberries, apples. Little chunks of apples. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. I just got a bite of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think you should make... Goat cheese, like like this blend is fantastic, but I know Stephanie made another one for another special at, at one point, not too long ago. But making fun goat cheeses like this and like putting it as a side on a board mm. would be fantastic. Like I, I could eat oh, this yeah. goat yeah. cheese by the yeah. spoonful. No, it is, it is. It's yep. really yummy. Yeah, agreed. It's great flavors and mm. so good with this. With this. Yeah, I, I kind of love the, the fact that they've got over. sweet potato in there as the base. Just because that's a uh, a New Englandy way to to do use a product that is grows really well here and mm -hmm. you can get organically grown. Where does the squash come from? Is it, uh, from a local farm? So it 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 depends on the week. So some weeks I buy from Brookford, some weeks I buy from Black River, and some weeks I buy from Beans and Grits. So I kind of just like go around, and I mean it's all of those sources come from. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you chose this because squash is available all mm -hmm. for sweet potato. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's why that's why our our fall and our winter menu have so much squash in them because <laughs> that's what grows here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what, it's what, grow what, in the winter, right? But you can it keep it. Out. Yeah. yeah, it holds up. Yeah, yeah. Also yeah. known as sweet potato, right? Yeah, yeah. sweet potato. Yeah. Squash? Yeah. This is. Yeah. Yeah. I get them mixed up. I have trouble with this every time Travis is making specials and talking about them. To me, sweet potato, worry, all types of squash, so. pumpkin, they're all they're all the orange mushy things. And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. they are delicious. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. The, the folly yeah. orange orange squishy things. things. I don't think so. I guess they're not always squishy, but mm. usually. I mean, yeah. Once they're yeah. Mm. They're orange. very hard before you cook them and very squishy when you do. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think they're a good combination with the goat cheese because they have a sweetness that offsets that kind of um, tartness that, that you have. And the apples are not sweet in here. They're tart. Mm. So I think it's a good juxtaposition of, of flavors. And I think it's a great use of something that is uh, mm. available in this climate, this time of year, sort of naturally. Right? Yeah. You can store apples. You can store sweet potatoes. You have goats. Yeah. So, so we have all the sesame seeds. Well, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> sesame seeds. But... It is their spice. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we've allowed the, the cheat on the spices, but that's fine. Yeah. Is there, I missed when you were listing everything in goat cheese, rosemary? So it normally gets uh, garnished with rosemary. It's coming tomorrow. No, but I think there's some in, it's yeah. mixed in with yeah. the goat There's some cheese. in yeah. it, but we yeah. also. Lemon zest, rosemary, garnish. top of sesame mm -hmm. seeds, diced apples. I, I, I got to say, though, the, the best part about this is it pairs perfectly. Yeah, rather. I agree. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's just, just the right balance yep. of sweetness yep. and creaminess. And yeah. It's just, it's really good. Yeah, I, I agree. I, it's, it's spot on. Well done. Well done. So the next is the shrimp. Ooh, it's the shrimp. shrimp. We're going to make right in front of us. Yeah. So He's showing your pan. What is that? He's sizzling butter away there. It's beautiful. Yeah. So what are we pairing with um, the shrimp batter? So that's Lake House White. Lake House White. Can okay. I have another right splash here. of crab apple? I think I'm going to, I would like to drink a little crab apple while he cooks. I while he that's cooks. That's a good idea. I'll <laughs> too. Might as well. Yeah. I do love the crab apple. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like I haven't. It's our signature wine, right? I feel like I haven't gotten it, a chance it, to drink crab apple as much. It's wine, I would say. I haven't been having crab apple as much recently because it's, it went off the tasting menu, which is too bad because, oh, it's such a good one, but. Ooh. Now that it's not on the tasting menu, it's been, I haven't, you know, haven't gotten to taste it as often. I just got a, a bite into the rosemary. Oh, it's you found such the rosemary? A cool yeah. flavor. I love well, that. Just, just like everybody else, I forgot things to turn with. He's Bye, Travis. You've been drinking, Travis? Just a, just a wee bit. Just you got to drink bit. while you cook, right? So, yeah, the, the crab apple was really. 
Next do week. something with it, swirl it around or something. <laughs> Bob's cooking. Yeah. Quick, Uh-oh, Travis, get back Bob's here. Bob's cooking. Oh, Bob drinking. does well. Bob's cooking. Well, didn't, I mean, Julia Childs made a whole career out of cooking and drinking. Yeah. And she was you should. very successful, was she mm-hmm. not? Yeah. So it's okay. okay. Yeah. You should always, well, always cooking have Cooking and drinking wine, go right? together. Yeah. Especially with wine. Mm-hmm. So. So what did you, what did you do? You put oh, that garlic smells so good. Put some butter in the, so butter in the sure. pan. Yeah. Then you put some garlic in the pan. Let the garlic kind of airy and, you know, uh, cook down. And then. It smells delicious. I wish we could oh my broadcast the scent of this garlic to everybody. And you get your shrimp in. We haven't invented smell-o-vision. Not yet. Smell of vision. Facebook Live yet, have we? Mm-mm. Nope. How about let's maybe we could start that here. Um, we'll send out scratch and sniff stickers ahead of time. Sniff. That's right. <laughs> now, do I, does our audience need to go to school to make this properly? No. Or do you think they could they could do this at home? They could do this at home without any training. Yeah. They. They. It's. Yeah. It's. I mean. It's. I kind of do almost like a shrimp scampi recipe. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not not really rocket science. So, you know what I find what what's that? amazing is, is that you can, you know, you look at recipes and you, you make them. I do this all the time. And it's never as easy as it looks when you read about it on the page. Right. Even simple things like this. It's about how long you heat the butter. It's about what temperature you heat the butter at. How right. long the garlic sits in the butter. Yep. And these are things that... You, the chef, mm-hmm. no. You do it enough times, you get practiced at it. But at home, when you're trying the recipe for the first time, it's a shot in the dark. You hope you get the butter at the right temperature. You hope you get the gar- garlic cooked enough, but not so much that it becomes black and caramely. And, uh, Especially if people don't cook very often, if they're yeah. sort of novices at cooking or something, yeah, so just how don't do you have know that experience. you're at the right temperature? I mean, you've made this a thousand you times. Is it how it's cooking, or do you go by the temperature? So I go how, by how it's cooking. So there's uh, on the back side of this, so induction burners all run a little different. So some of them, they, they say 160 on this side. If you check the actual pan temp, it's probably around 300 because the direct center is cranking. Much hotter. Is much hotter than the pan heats up and keeps heating up and keeps heating up. So you kind of have to watch so you keep, as you, you go. So you keep moving the butter around so it doesn't burn. Right, yeah. garlic around so it doesn't burn. Yep. And then how do you know when the shrimp is cooked? There's something that so they they up. they turn pink, and once they're all pretty, once they're all pretty pink, that's when I add the wine, and then You're turning them. Yeah. And you season them, right? What do you put? Yep. It? So I, salt and pepper, it's right? just salt and pepper and garlic, okay. right now. Is this salted butter, butter or um, unsalted butter? It's unsalted. Unsalted butter. Because, right, because right. if you use salted butter, it adds salt to the dish, and then. You're adding salt, so you'll have you you keep checking. But a lot of chefs do unsalted butter so they can control the salt factor. Yeah, I, I think that sounds. Good could you me. use cooked shrimp? You could use it cooked shrimp. Just it's just gonna, the flavor quite a well. Bit, right? It's not so much that it's that you're gonna have to add things at a different time. So you would start the garlic, then you these would already be cooked. So it would be a faster thing. You wouldn't be able to pull out all the flavor because mm-hmm. of the raw shrimp pull, pulling the flavor yeah. in. Can you? Overcooked shrimp? Yes, you can. Oh, what's going on here? Ooh. What's that? So this is Lake House White, and I'm just going to, now I can turn my pan up a little bit to let it uh, really, uh, like, start cooking the wine off, because if you don't cook the wine enough, then it tastes like wine, which isn't a bad thing, but when you add the food and you have the wine, you still take the alcohol content. You're cooking in. the alcohol. Cooking the alcohol off, yeah. Yeah. Alcohol starts burning off at 170 degrees. About that, yeah, 168 is generally where the where it it vaporizes. I don't know why I know that. Because yeah, no, No. we don't know why you know that. Yeah, exactly. No clue. (laughs) While he's cooking this, I love to hear from the audience what you are drinking tonight, along with watching. I always like I always like hearing what people are up to at home. Unfortunately, we see uh, Priscilla shared she is nursing a leg fracture from skiing. It oh, turns no. out. I, knew, I, saw, I feel like I last week she Priscilla mentioned an injury, Facebook. but I maybe didn't realize oh, it was no. a fracture at that point. Oh, boy. So, oh, yeah. sorry have to hear some that. wine, Priscilla, yeah. and please get well. We'll yeah. see you out there. Dude. We're going to do a ski trip with, with club members. So, Priscilla, let us know how long you need before you get <laughs> out on the slopes so yeah. we can make sure you can join us. What, what does Dr. Hardcastle, Dr. Hardcastle, Dr. Hardcastle prescribed 
for broken bones? Is it Lake House White? I, uh, Hermitage. Well, I think gener bones? generally her uh, Hermitage <laughs> and elderberry <laughs> are the elderberry. You know, the elderberry yes. is you yes. know supposed to boost so your immune three to glasses to of elderberry an hour for the next two weeks, and you'll be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said four months minimum. Oh, Ouch. oh might have to be next okay. winter. Oh, next winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's oh, hardly yeah. any snow now in four months. I'm pretty right. sure there won't be any at all. I don't know. Yeah. I think I think instead of getting the snow now, I think we're gonna get it all in like April. It, aren't you the optimist? I'm not excited about having it. Fingers crossed. April. So really. Well, some but if for you. I want it at some point. Thank you. Uh, so Christine is drinking heirloom crab apple. Oh, Ken. Ken is tuned in. Hi, Ken. Hi, Good to see you. Um, yes, Ken, Ken, Ken definitely says El Ken says elderberry. Elderberry. Uh, I don't know if that's what he's glasses, drinking or what three, he recommends, three, but three, three, three you know, glasses an hour, Chef every Paul's, hour. Yes. This looks very different than when I had this the other day. So that's it's missing. Well, I it's missing part. something. It's missing yeah. my favorite part. So as we're in a deep clean today, I uh, must have uh, missed the braised kale part. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, just a tiny splash, and then I'll rinse with it. Have the shrimp anyway. So yeah, that's actually a good normally, update. Why don't you describe what it would so normally, normally be? So normally, this has a braised kale that we braise oh. down in in, right. in uh, so we braise it down in a pan with olive oil, garlic, red chili flakes, and obviously salt and pepper. So and we braise that down in a pan for I would say forty five minutes to an hour, and then we just let it go low and slow, and it braises down. And then it uh, goes with the shrimp. I yeah, I love that base. That's a, oh my god! Wow, that's did. good. What is? You want to grab me? another glass or just drink that? Oh there you god. go, Travis. Wow. There's a few glasses over here. Just bring that around. I'll get rid of that. To that awful. I mean, yeah, that really crab delicious crab really apple. Wipe that. Wipe this is wipe that. so good. Wow. I just love being blown away by Lake House White. So when I make this sometimes, people say this tastes, when I give it to the staff, they say that it tastes buttery. Obviously, I use butter, but they say that the buttery, it comes out buttery from the Lake House White, but. Oh, the pairing is so perfect yeah. yet again. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So these are times, I will admit that. That's perfect. Lake House, you were just raving about the best, like. I will admit, Lake House White is not my favorite of the Hermit Woods wines. Mm. I enjoy it, but mostly I enjoy it in situations like this where mm -hmm. it's just, it's just so perfect in mm. pairing well, like this or that muscle recipe. Isn't and that's always just, the case. If you have the right wine with the right food, a lot of people come in when they talk about where at the tasting bar and say, oh, I can't drink big reds. Have you had a big red with a steak? Right? Mm -hmm. It's a whole different experience. Yeah. If you have a big, dry, grippy red, all by itself, yeah, no, a lot of people would probably not yep. agree that that's a great choice. Yeah. But you have it with a steak, mm -hmm. very different. Same with this Lake House White. If you just drink Lake House White by itself, well, some people may like it, mm -hmm. but if you have it with food and it pairs beautifully with, it's like it's like the spice on the food. It's like mm -hmm. the, 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 what do you call that? The, the, something that accompanies the food, the mm -hmm. garnish. It's like yeah. the uh, mm -hmm. garnishing flavor, if you will. Uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. Comment from Ken. I love Lake House White, one of my all-time favorites. We even got Ken to admit yep. a favorite, which I yep. feel like is a rare thing from no. any of the three of yeah. you. Well, there's a lot of heart in this wine. I mean, it's the it's the picking event every year on mm -hmm. the seacoast to get the, um, the rose hips. Local peaches, variety of peaches that go in here, and then quince. I mean, it's just such a cool combination of, of things that turns into something where the sum total of it is so much better than any individual component. Mm. And then in this, and using it in, in the cooking and then pairing it, that the shrimp is this, it's almost like lobster. Mm. It has that kind of almost briny, uh, rich um, thing that's that's lobster, that tastes like shrimp, perfect texture, mm. butter, and then to go along with the, mm. the, the quince and rhubarb and the, 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 this is, it's, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Right. For, like you said, you're not a big Lake House White fan. And but with I'm this? Not a big yeah. fan. Well, I, I was just <laughs> thinking. Two together. Yeah. In, it's, it's, and I could eat this all night. Mm -hmm. I hope Carolyn's not watching. She's a, 
huge, massive fan of shrimp. Mm. I was thinking, yeah, kind of coming off the holidays, being at you know various family gatherings and having just your standard shrimp cocktail, you know, mm. those uh, the basic shrimp frozen shrimp, shrimp, shrimp with the cocktail sauce, sauce that is, no, I, I I enjoy that sure. shrimp, but yeah. compared to this, like that is, I'm just thinking about how tasteless those shrimps are. They are. Shrimp can be absolutely tasteless. Like they're, they're, you know, it's, it's a vehicle a for the cocktail sauce, but yeah. this is so flavorful. So these are locally farmed shrimp from Lake Winnipesaukee, is that right? Yeah, so we, <laughs> so I actually send Jack down, he gets a, his bucket, he gets his net out, <laughs> and he gets it down there. And the gets shrimp it. boat goes out, on, yeah, it's a little known. Yeah, Jack of all trades, uh, <laughs> it's also <Yeah>. our fisherman. <laughs> I can picture, I can actually picture Jack would make a great lobster man. I can really see him lobster. out on a lobster oh, yeah. boat. Yeah. We've got. We should get Jack on here. Yeah. We should do some more staff interviews on the show. Yeah, agreed. Well, I need some more lake house wine if you don't mind. That's yeah, so um, a little bit left here for you. Oh yeah, great comment from Christine. Yeah, she can't wait to taste the next batch of lake house white that she just a splash please that she helped pick rose sips for. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. It's gonna. I be, want it's now. Be see what we're missing batch. here that we had when we cooked those mussels with the lake house ways, we had the bread so that we could just sop yeah. up yeah. that <laughs> lovely. Yeah. I would, yeah. yeah, I wish I could. Listen, there's one. I would, I would actually take a piece of bread and just. Oh yeah. Cool, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so this, I'll take the last. This shrimp. is reminiscent. Somebody's got it. Just there's, pour there's it. So shrimp I can. in there. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Um, so we want this all is that. how I yeah. start my, my, uh, mussels recipe that goes mm. is is the same thing salt pepper and garlic mm. and oil not butter but so some of those same flavors are coming through as yeah. come through in the mussel recipe which the mussel recipes is, it is online I, I don't know where I put it somewhere if you Google it or oh I, actually, I think I put it on the on the it's on the website somewhere yeah if you go to the uh, the news section and search mussels mm. it's, it's there do we share any of these recipes no but we can. Can we? Chef Travis is oh, oh, no. no, they're totally fine. I we can share them. Well, wait a minute. I think he did just share it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, we just did. It's public yeah. now, so it's we can share public this public. one. <laughs> uh, Christine's got to wait a while. The the Bachelor Lake House White that she contributed to isn't probably going to be bottled now till 2024. Still in barrel. Oh, okay. It'll be a bit. Mm. Well, That's true. Yeah, it's 20, so 2020 Lake House White that we've got right now. If you were to have this as part of the the prefix menu mm -hmm. for Thursday night. Yep. You wouldn't just have shrimp like we just did. No. It was so, garnished with something, right? So yeah, so it has braised kale. So it has it's shrimp, braised kale, and then we finish it with uh, a little bit of tome cheese, but it's like a dust, so I don't want to say this, but I, it, it's the best way to explain it. So you know when you go to Hannaford and they have that shaker parmesan? That's well, but that's what the consistency of the tome cheese is. Is a like a really a fine, a fine, fine cheese, and yeah. we just dust it I've over the it. top. You hardly, you hardly get a cheese experience with mm. with the braised kale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just adds a hint of flavor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That saltiness. Or I actually mm. like. I like when when uh, when I've had food prepared like that, where cheese is just a, a flavoring as opposed to a, a, a you know dripping the goo. Or, you know, which I love too, but mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really nice. Just like Parmesan is that way, right? Yeah, you can yeah. sprinkle a little Parmesan on something and really get a nice, nice uh, character in the finish. Yeah, flavor. I mean, when this was in the test kitchen and we tried it out with you and we did we did a Parmesan sauce, it was just it was too much. It was too much for the whole thing. So like, you need a you need light, you need light because the braised short is heavy. Heavy. Yeah. So you need light. So. And it that's next. Yep. So that's next. So this is a braised short rib that we braised for four to six hours in Red Scare and Elderberry now. It was Lake House Red, but Ken has some wine down in the cellar that is Red Scare and Elderberry. So we've changed the recipe a little bit. Is this the same uh, braised short rib that you put on the crustinis? Yes, it's the same one. The recipe changed a little bit because we're using a little oh. bit different wine. It's not, uh, I, I don't think it changed it that much. I don't think it made a huge, crazy you make, change. Did you make it two different? Mm, it's, one for that and one for the other? No, it's the exact same one. So it's the exact same, it's the exact same braised short rib. It's just, um, we were using a uh, Lake House Red, which we don't have in the in the eatery on the on the menu. So I was opening bottles of Lake House Red, and Ken was like, "I don't know." 
Yeah, it seems like he was like, I don't know about all that. So then he had he had Red Scare down in the cellar that he was used that he had. So then we used it, and it came out. It, it, like I said, I don't notice that much of a difference. It's it's the same short rib. It really is. So and this is this so short rib, I'd say of the new menu items, the braised short rib crostini. If you haven't been in to try that yet, it is one of the best. Oh my new things that we've got it's we've got little crostinis with yeah. this incredible short rib yeah. that just falls off the bones we actually i'll, I'll admit a, a kitchen kitchen loss we uh jack was making it earlier this week and he made a batch of short ribs and he was transferring it from the the pan yeah. to mm -hmm. the container and and it he picked it up with the tongs and it just crumbled and he went to catch it with his gloves and it just fell right through his gloved hands it was that tender oh yeah yeah that it oh, just God. he couldn't even catch it just yeah. right off the bone <laughs> how many yeah. hours do you braise it for four to six four to depending six depending on the size of the yeah. short rib yeah so we have because of supply chain issues and whatever it may be sometimes yeah. there's a boneless one sometimes there's a bone in one so it depends on which one that we're doing for the day yeah. so and that's all from vermont mm -hmm. Yep. New England yeah, raised yeah. beef. What else? It's the, on those crostines, the short rib and then blue cheese and the Waz sour cherry mm -hmm. spread, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That is so good. Oh, so yeah. Good. They, that, and it's that, yeah, the Great Hill blue cheese that we've raved about before on the show. Mm -hmm. We're from, here to talk about the prefix. That's true. Yeah. So I want it. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> I haven't had that yet. So um, you have tongs over there? You want to hand them out? I'll just, I'll just grab them. You want to grab them? Mm hmm. That's so Here. barbaric. Yeah. What do you say? That's so what? Barbaric. <laughs> this is fine. So diet. describe this. What's on it? So this is braised short rib, caramelized onions, and arugula on a ciabatta. Ciabatta. Ooh, but something on the ciabatta, right? So the ciabatta has this. This was a. Uh, uh, Mm. So yeah, onions. yeah, I like that little pop of color. So the onions cook with the braising, or do you cook them separately? No, nope, cook separate. Yeah. So the the caramelized onions. So it's on a couple men. It's on this, and it's on a different menu item. So we just caramelize a bunch of onions, and then we take a a, a heap out for caramelized onions, and then we take the rest of it and turn it into French onion soup. Oh. <laughs> That's kind Efficiency. Of two soups with mm. one soup and a <laughs> yep. With one stove. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah. So and then obviously it braises in red scare. So we pair it with red scare, and everyone that's had it says it's, uh, it's another perfect pairing. Yeah. So do you have the Waz onion spread on here too? No. So this is just caramelized onions. It's just caramelized. Onions. Yeah. Right. No. Nope. This is just mm. caramelized yeah. onions and arugula, red salt scare. pepper, yeah. and red scare. Yeah. Spot on. Mm -hmm. The pairings on these are some of the best pairings we. Think we have in the, in, in the way. Some of the, they're just spot on. There's yeah. nothing wrong with any of them. It's interesting. The red scare is one. I was having this conversation with someone at the tasting bar yesterday that it's one of my favorite wines that Ken makes. It's one of the best wines we have, I think. And I think that there are a lot of people that feel like red scare is just one of the just incredible wine. But I have a harder time pairing red scare. They're, the pairings with red scare, I think, aren't obvious. Things like Lake House White, we know it, it goes really well with things like shrimp and mussels and lighter foods. And the Winnie Rosé goes with everything. And, you know, the heavier wines like Hermitage and Elderberry go with a heavier, like, steak. And Red Scare, when I think, what do I pair with Red Scare? There aren't things that jump to my mind instantly. But when we do mm. tests with our menu and we find something that pairs with Red Scare, I think they've been some of the absolute best pairings, like pairing it with this or the brace or crostini, or isn't it the sweet potato wrap mm. is the other thing that's on the menu right yep. now that, yep. you know, you wouldn't necessarily guess that Red Scare goes with it, but when you try it, then all of a sudden it's just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a, such a, a unique wine. I don't know what it is about it that makes me have a hard time knowing automatically what to pair with it. It's just, I just know that when we find things that pair well, it's, the best pairings so for me the red scare is my go-to one when i come to the shows on on thursday it's like 
carafe red scare. Just no brainer. And then whatever I have, petite blue salad is one of my favorite things, but it's still excellent mm. with red scare. And then So you what know, do you think your, about when you think about Red Scare and you start thinking, how am I going to pair with this? What kind of foods do you, what, what is it about Red Scare that starts informing yeah. you about yeah. what food you want to eat? That's a good question. So I wouldn't expect something with like a, the, the vinaigrette that the Petit Blue Salad has that any red wine would pair well with it. And yet, because maybe it's the honey component in, in Red Scare, it actually holds up. It doesn't get washed out by, by, the, um, by the vinegar. Uh, and then, so otherwise for Red Scare, it would be any any meat, any meat. I mean, even fish or lobster. Okay, ribeye. Ribeye to mm. ribeye to have to, mm. to big steak. I mean, but I wouldn't have a problem with with pairing it with seafood that's non like a white yeah. salmon for sure. Yeah, salmon. yeah, salmon for sure. But I'd have it with lobster. Matt says any meal with winter squashes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think of this typically. It's not the big bold tannic line that you typically have with a with a ribeye, but no, it's got enough acidity, right. so it it can actually compete with that mm -hmm. with that intense flavor. Yeah, because it does this. This has got yeah. lots of oils. And yeah, meat. right. Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's it's just a really really good all around. So good. Priscilla recommends red scare with baked brie in a sourdough bowl with fig and pear. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Priscilla. That's uh, yep. delicious. Mm. Yeah, I was saying, Matt just got home. We saw Matt today. He popped in. We were closed today. We alluded to it a couple of times. We we closed the winery today and did a big, deep cleaning. We scrubbed the place from top to bottom. Had a ton of staff here all working really hard. Kudos to our fantastic staff. Mm. Um, but a few people stopped in. You know, we were closed, but we were able to do some retail wine sales. And it was fun to see Matt and Lynn popped in. Mm. So they just got home and, and tuned in. Happy New Year, Matt. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah. Matt also recommends any meal with caviar. Mm. Not something I often have on my menu. Yeah, no, I know nothing about caviar. Yeah. I've had fish eggs before. I wouldn't call it caviar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Well, yeah, yeah, it's it's it was, it was a strange experience. A Raw good of mine salmon was, eggs. Yeah, a good friend of mine is from Finland, and he would order have his mom send him when we were in college caviar in a tube. Oh yeah, I oh, had that toothpaste. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And he, There's he, a lot he, of things he, I remember having that. It. Even in uh, way back, I went on a family trip to Norway when I was in middle school, and I remember you know our lunches. We tried not to spend too much money going out, so we stopped at a grocery store and we got like crackers and we got a lot of things in tubes. We had like cheese in a tube and fish in a tube and really? they're like those kind of metal toothpaste tubes. And it's better, you know, you can get like cheese whiz here, yeah, but it's much higher quality product, I I think. Um, Maybe. But I have since had, actually, I had the coolest thing. I have a picture somewhere that maybe I'll try and figure out a way to share. Um, this past fall when I was in um, in Sweden with my mom at one of the breakfasts at the hotel, all these hotel breakfasts were. I saw pictures. Oh, my God. Oh my I, God. I think I did a whole album of my that breakfast was, That was shop. the same when Ken went to Israel. He was sharing some of the, the breakfast. Oh, my gosh. But they, they had this it, device yeah. yes, I've seen this at thing. the breakfast bar where they had one of those tubes of, I think that one was fish eggs. Um, and they had a little caviar. device where they caviar. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it was the tube sort of hooked up to this metal device that you just sort of twisted and it squeezed it out for you in a very efficient, clean way. It was very impressive. I, I have to say, I've had that experience traveling in Europe and, I, and Ken certainly shared that. And, and you, you've shared it as well. Chuck, you travel in Europe a lot. They have a, they seem to, Europeans seem to have a much greater appreciation for the finer things of food, generally. I mean, that, uh, that's been my experience when yeah. I travel. Mm -hmm. the, the, the meals that I've had, the, you know, when you, when, you have, when you go to a, a hotel in America or the hotel breakfast, <laughs> yeah. It can sometimes leave a little to be desired, I have to say. Yep. <laughs> Which is, you talked about this in previous episodes, I think, the idea of that people have such small fridges because they're going shopping so regularly because everything you're getting is, right. it's that morning's bread, it's that morning's fish catch, it's, it's spent, fresh things, so you get it in such high quality. Yeah. living in France, and we swapped houses, and the, the house that I had, the, the refrigerator was was, was like a a college refrigerator. It was that small, and it was this was their home. 
Yeah. And I, at first I didn't understand it. But then the other thing I realized after being in a month, a month in France, driving all over France for a month, I never once saw a supermarket. And I'm told they're there. Oh, they are there. I just didn't obviously go buy one. Yeah. But you can't drive around here without going by a supermarket almost, you know, every time you go through, you're going to go mm. by a supermarket. Yeah. So, uh, so I found it very interesting. And the thing that I did find driving around in Europe was there was a corner market with fresh produce and bread at every, in fact, the bread usually came from a market dedicated to just providing fresh bread, bread every yeah. day. A, a brasserie, brass, I think it was. Uh, um, no, uh, boulangerie. Boulangerie. Mo boulangerie, yes. Yeah. Patisserie, Patisserie is pastries. Is pastries boulangerie is bread. bread. Brasserie is a beer, a beer yes. um, which I'm sure you didn't go to. <laughs> no. Yeah. It makes me think, too, about the, the sort of difference in culture around sort of leisure time. Because I'm thinking if, if you told Americans that instead of doing their weekly grocery shopping trip at a big supermarket, that they had to go to four different stores to get their groceries twice a week or three times a week or every day. Yeah. You would, it seems like that's, that's too many errands to do because we work so much. Yeah. No, but I no, feel like there's more time. Yeah. No, yeah. There's so much more time when yeah. people have reasonable work expectations. Well, it, well it, we have to drive everywhere too. We that's true. You can't walk. France, yeah. You just walk to the, to the boulangerie, get your, your baguette and your, your croissants and breakfast. All of those things, the, the market, the boulangerie, the, all of those things that provided the foods were within a block or two yeah. where we were staying. Right, right. So the, no yeah. need for a big fridge. Because right. we would just, you, you know, we eat something, we just walk down yeah. to the, the corner market and get the fresh ingredients. Yeah. Get and, a half a dozen, dozen croissants, three baguettes. Yeah. And do that every day. Mm -hmm. And to, yeah, to me, like I, I hate that if I if I have to stop at the grocery store on the way home because I forgot something on my weekly grocery shop, shopping trip, I, I get so annoyed that, oh, I forgot. And I it, it seems like it's it's less efficient. I'm paying more because I'm going to the small grocery store instead of the big one that I go to every week. And ah. it's it seems like such a bad thing, but it's it's a oh, different sounds so much better. Yeah. And the bakeries. Uh, Wolfgang was here visiting from from Europe. He has a house in, in the south of France. And so we went to the, the the supermarkets looking for a bakery, and he said, "Where are the bakeries? Like, what bakeries? Exactly. I mean, they are mm -hmm. not part of our culture. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of yeah, a lot of some towns and cities do have a, a nice bakery downtown, but it's not in, not in the same way that they have other Better places. Be Manchester or Concord. Yeah. You, you gotta be, you gotta be in Concord. That's one thing. Yeah. That's one thing that I know Meredith feels like is missing, but I think it would, if somebody tried to open a bakery here, they would have a really hard time. They would, because they would nobody struggle. wants to make a stop at a bakery. Yeah. And they would, they will, they compete because we, we already do have a cafe, you know, coffee shop in town that does right. pretty well. But if there was a second place that was trying to do that sort of, well, Hannaford has a bakery. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, they have there you go. But most of the stuff actually, <laughs> actually, because we went to Hannaford, it's baked somewhere else. Yeah, yep. and then brought it. Right. They do oh. have an oven for some things. But yeah. essentially, yeah, this so, is a very small Hannaford here. So, in where did our paninis come from? Hannaford's? What? The panini that is. The, oh, the bread? The bread? bread? Yeah. So, this bread um, comes from, it's a little out, it's in Maryland, but it's a really nice, nice bread company. Is so, that the, so our nearest a, bakery with really good panini breads in Maryland. No, that's not is true. Is that the Bakery de France uh, from Black River? Wait a minute here. Let's just be clear. We get the majority of bread that we make our paninis yes. from the bread peddler. From the bread peddler. That yes. hasn't changed. Okay. Baked right here in Sanborn. In Sanborn, New Hampshire. Yeah. 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 I asked him if you made a ciabatta. Well, there was. There was. There was two boxes. Yes, no. So the, <laughs> I would say 80% of the paninis that we do come from the bread peddler. The only reason I went with this bread company is because it's a consistent bread that is a small company out of Maryland. It is a consistent company. Well, it's hard well, to get good and and Bob right doesn't here. Bob doesn't make ciabatta no. that I know of. Yeah. I asked. And, and there's the certain things that are on our menu that ciabatta right? just yes. works yeah, so much better. Yeah. He makes, a, you know, uh, what's the thing that you really love that Bob makes? The bread peddler. Um, all of it. Not your, not your body, but um, he makes something. So uh, just the, the peasant uh, I can't bread. Can't think of the word for the it. Onion, peasant bread. The onion in the middle. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, oh, they, oh, yeah. Jewish delight. I'll oh, find. I'll, I'll look him up. Um, the things that he makes. That it's, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's it's just fantastic. Bialis. Bialis. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, those yeah. Are Bialis. Yeah. 
but he can't. He can't do everything. I mean, it's just right. one guy. It's one guy. Bread yep. Literally right. in his home. In his home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I drove up right. to his. I drove up to his house before, and like you, he opens the door, and there's a commercial <laughs> oven oh, right, yeah. like two, three, four of them yeah. right there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna link his website to you all, just so you can yeah. look into him. He, He's in all the local. Not all, but many of the local farmers markets. Yeah. You can get his bread, but uh, he has bread here. We, and he's right here. Oh yeah, and he, he does have he's he stocks the Concord Food Co-op. So anyone that lives in the New Hampshire yeah. in New Hampshire and can get well, up there. He's a great gift. He's just passionate yeah, he, about what he's doing. He's been using his bread and selling his bread and cooking with his bread yeah. for, for ten years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I I he's fantastic. the day that he ever decides to not make bread anymore yeah. because it's just such good bread. Yeah. yeah. I would so encourage we, as someone to open a boulangerie here in Meredith. No, not, not anything against oh, Bob, but we, we have some vacant spaces on Main Street. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Any, any aspiring business people out there, there, we can help you. Yes. Give us a call. Yeah. We'll, we'll direct you to the right place. Yeah, yes. yeah. And we'll, we would serve baguettes and come up with some nice dishes and things here. I think about it. this makes yeah. me dream. I don't know. Like, not that I really want to leave. I'm happy where I am, but I, I kind of want to go live in France for a year. Oh, me too. Oh, I'd love to live in France, <laughs> yeah. but no, no can do. We have a winery there we have to take care of. Yeah. That's okay. Well, we'll that. visit France. Can I take a, a, Extended a, a leave of absence? Oh, or even, no. Oh, no. So what are we on to next? The so we stuff. are on oh. we, yeah, to... So we have 12 minutes for dessert. Well, 12 minutes. Well, that dessert. is... Uh, I only see that was one dessert. Something... Yeah. something There's only one of those beautiful yeah. desserts. And the ice we cream get a little... A... Yeah. So we are uh, almost an hour into this. So the ice oh, cream went show, from anyway. happy to here yeah, before yeah. before it gets fully destroyed. I'm gonna but hold anyway, it up actually, for people to is, see is here. Ice, what, see, oh, ice cream. Oh, ice cream. Oh, Marika, what are you doing? It's oh, liquid. I'm sorry. It's ice cream. Go we'll pour some onto your plate. Oh, always. <laughs> that, we should probably get rid of that camera shot. Actually. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I moved it over so it could it could show before going in. We only need to no, get a bite. It was some crevices. It's right here. Yeah. It's yeah. I, yeah, I, tur- I, I turned you off. <laughs> there. I didn't see you. Yeah. All right. So we have some melted ice cream. Yeah. So where does the ice cream come from? The ice cream is actually a uh, sandwich creamery. Oh, sandwich nice. creamery. Awesome. Yep. Oh, yep. sandwich yep. cream is a they fantastic are place. The best. Yep. So sandwich creamery, and then Steph makes that apple pie over here. Hmm. I will not trip on your computer. <laughs> not tripping on your computer. Being very but cautious. Obviously, after uh, an hour, ice cream turns into. Uh, That's okay. Liquid. It's cream now. And the, um, yeah. That's fine. Cream. So, yeah, that's really very nice. The uh, apples. I get the rest. The apple sauce. Ah. No, that's half the for caramel. Travis. Don't that? forget about Travis. The okay. caramel. We made that. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So this one, we don't have a pairing with it for the prefix dinner. But I highly recommend, if you're here for the prefix dinner and need a little something to cap off your evening, I would recommend Melange Blanc mm. as a pairing with oh, this yeah. one. Mm. Yeah. You, can no. always, you can always order a glass of something extra. Can you, can you come in um, in an afternoon and have a prefix meal with the, with the pairing? Or is that just only for the uh, shows on Thursday? It's right. only for Thursday. Yeah, because you only make We're, just enough. We are currently developing a prefix menu for Friday and Saturday nights. For piano nights. For piano nights. Yeah, so you can come in and just chill out, have a prefix mm-hmm. with a pairing. So you get a food and a wine experience mm-hmm. and oh, listen which, to some phenomenal piano. Which, right? by the way, starting in January, piano night is from 6 to 9. Oh, wow. Wow. So, you can so that in, can be dinner. You mm-hmm. can come in early and catch some piano, have some food. If you have reservations at one of our local fine restaurants, you could come in and have dinner, I mean, have a piano experience before going to your reservations, or vice versa. If your reservations are at somewhere other place, you can come after your reservations. Yeah. Or, best of both worlds, you can come <laughs> here and have one of Travis's new prefix menus and enjoy dinner and piano right here. So six to nine, three hours of piano. That's fantastic, Bob. Yeah. When does that start? Is that starts, this week? Starts this week. This week, wonderful. Starts Friday. So, so this was delicious. Mm. And I have to say, I mean, I've had this this prefix meal a few times. What actually we really liked about it is the creaminess of the ice cream got to soak into the. Into That's the, actually not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah, and it was it just brought that. It's like having sweet cream mm. uh, over an apple tart. I think that might go with some crab apple. I that already might finished. Go with some crab yeah. apple, yeah. Might, I mean, it, yeah. It, Lake House 
I mean, uh, Melange Blanc would be probably better, but. Well, we couldn't find that here, could we? <laughs> Matt's giving us some recommended dessert pairings. Uh, Red Scare with ginger snaps or gingerbread or wild blue with oatmeal raisin. Oh, Strawberry you, rhubarb man. with sugar cookies. You're making me even more hungry. Oh, boy. I need some dessert. Since we had to split the dessert four ways, mm -hmm. I'm, le I'm left wanting. Oh, yeah, this is, oh, yeah, crab apple with apple pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. Crab oh, my God. Apple with apple mm -hmm. pie. It's starting to no, perfect. Wow. Actually, yeah. No. Wow. Yeah, that killed it. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Who the thought? tartus in those, I mean, yeah. you use, uh, there's skin on the apple, right? Mm -hmm. You use the whole mm -hmm. apple mm -hmm. with skin, so you get the, yeah. the, the little bitterness that you get from the skin on the crab apple with the sweet tartness oh, on the sweet finish. Cream. Oh, mm. Yeah. It's nice because it's just like they just have the lingering taste in my mouth, that little bit of cinnamon yeah. in there. Oh, it's, it's cinnamon. It's cinnamon, it's the apple. cinnamon yeah. that's lingering. Yeah, I agree. The yeah, cinnamon it just loves this this one. You see, I wish I wish Josie was watching right now. So our staff member Josie, yeah. she's a big fan of cinnamon. And if anyone's tried it, our chicken apple brie panini is a hit for sure. It's a lovely combination of things. Josie insists that we should put some cinnamon, cinnamon. in there, and we we have tried it with the cinnamon. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good addition, but it's a little I don't know, I don't know what the word is, a little extra. No, I'm, maybe. I'm a, I, I think I, I, that sounds good to me, and particularly if you're pairing it with this, because apparently, and I've, I haven't had this experience before, but heirloom crab apple and cinnamon are mm. match made now. Yeah, mm. we've definitely it's it's a fantastic wine. We've been um doing samples and by the glass of mulled wine here at the tasting bar. And, and oh. we've been mostly doing petite blue. There've been a few other wines here and there that we've subbed in, but um, heirloom crab apple is another one that is a fantastic mulled wine. I think that's wine. a great base. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think we need to make an executive decision here. This has been so nice having all this fresh made food. I think we had a cooking show like every few weeks. Yeah. Oh yeah. We should yeah. Do, maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. think, Travis? Yeah. We do a cooking show once a month. Ma Matt's once got another one. Uh, baked yeah. plantains with cinnamon and three honey right. and three honey. Oh, Baked, yeah, plantains. Oh, plantains. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. We could do once or, a month, uh, probably. A cookies and wine night. Oh, uh oh, you get Mac. Matt. Matt started. Matt's, a Matt's on a roll with his <laughs> dessert pairings here. <laughs> We're gonna need some more time. Yeah, he's got lots of we don't, ideas. Cookies we aren't here. Oh, no, no. How about this, Bob? We do our show live, and we get our live audience, and we have a cooking. A, a, you show come up with some audience. neat thing that you wanted to try. You think would pair really well, and then we, we the audience gets to judge. Yeah, test you know, kitchen. We give them all cards, live like test one kitchen. to five. Test kitchen live. Test kitchen. There you live. go. No you know there. we. I, you know our regulars <laughs> well, would jump on and that. And the and the people online can can vote too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they have to make a comment though. Then we know they're there though. Mm -hmm. So that's good for us. Mm -hmm. Chuck's thinking. So, so speaking of your next adventure as a prefix for Fridays and Saturdays, what are you thinking for that? We must have some ideas. For that. So we already have a menu printed. And that, that's, oh. a, and that's a bigger has, menu, right? It, yeah. so, it's, so it's, this is more like items. small, eight. small bites. So it's a pick from each thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's a, still, it's four courses. It's still four courses. It's just. But each course has two choices. Each course has two choices, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, no, no, not well, each thing. I like that. <laughs> yes. I like that. That's because nice because then it, if you it have helps. you a dietary issue, yep. um, yes. whatever, <laughs> you, you can have a, you know, you can sort of. Hmm? Prepare on so either side are, of what are they going to be? Well, let me go get the menu, the menu for you. Hold on, I'll get you the menu. You need to know yeah. what's going on, right? Yeah. When is it going to be available? Well, it could be. Uh, we have to trial run it, so <laughs> that's tomorrow. Well, no, that, that's something no tomorrow. Different. Something else. Tomorrow is another another, another thing tomorrow. upcoming. Possibly uh, keep your emails. Keep keep. Keep an eye on your email. There might be another, another lovely food extravaganza that there is a limited opportunity for a select few customers. So, the eatery prefix menu for Fridays and Saturdays. Starting. Well, we have to trial run it first. We have so, to trial run it. Probably through, not this weekend, but maybe not. the weekend after. Yes. Let's let's shoot for that weekend after. Yes. Second week of January. Uh -huh. I'll trial run it tomorrow if you like. I mean, <laughs> we have something else to trial run <laughs> tomorrow. We have something else to trial run tomorrow. We can't do both. Okay. Well, we might be able to do both. On occasion, know. we should probably be home for dinner. 
Yeah, maybe. I'll invite Carolyn. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll talk All right. to Steve. So the the eatery prefix dinner for Friday and Saturdays. So for the first in two weeks, <laughs> potentially, we'll find yeah. out. We'll find out how reviews go. Okay. So we have a, a beet tart that has feta, carrots, and oyster mushrooms inside the tart, along with a beet puree, a delicata squash. So it's a half a squash stuffed with spinach and artichoke. Those would be a choice. One Those are the one choice for the first one. All right. Both vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then second course is a shrimp crostini with mushroom, red peppers, and sage, mm. or a short rib bread. So oh, is that one of Stephanie's like that's, baked Polish breads? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. She yeah, made some of that for the holiday for party. Okay. All right. And then for the main course, we have an arancini with spinach, feta, and red sauce, or oh. so it's a fried rice ball. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a chicken that is a wild blue gastric kale and butternut puree. Mm. And then the fourth course selection is the apple pie pocket we had, or Excellent. an olive oil cake with a red scare compote. Oh, I just want the red scare compote. Can I just have a bowl of red scare compote, please? <laughs> We've had this before. <laughs> No, no, I just, I just, just want know, red scare compote. Just maybe, maybe with some, like, maybe just, just like a, a handful of yeah. raspberries and red scare compote. Just, yep, that, mm. I'll take so, that. Like that I said, delicious. but what this is also, this? so this is just, See what I own. this is the first one. And same with this prefix sitter. So we're coming to test some new recipes soon, soon. So what's the plan, <laughs> Travis? So this, the prefix menu that we tested tonight, we've been running this for the past month or so has been an option um, about that a few weeks, three weeks yeah. anyway three weeks, yeah. um and it'll be available for another few weeks but it'll so this, it'll be a rotating selection so if you are a regular run through february okay. and then we'll switch in march yeah so if you're a regular to our thursday night shows you know you can come try it out you could have it every week if you wanted but even if you know you could have it once or twice and then it'll it will change so you'll have different options and there'll be new new menus coming out mm. Speaking Regular. of shows, this Thursday, Yamika Peterson is coming back. She was here six months ago ish and put on an amazing show. Absolutely amazing. I had seen her perform before in other settings, but when she got in front of a listening audience, she became a whole new performer. Oh, fun. And she's back again this Thursday with a new group of people, Mika's Groove Train. It's a great, so great, great funk name. And some R and B, and and if her previous performance has anything to say about what we're expecting Thursday night, it's going to be. Get your show. tickets now. Get your tickets now. And include order the prefix. prefix menu. Can you order the prefix through? Right. It's part. Of, it's ticket. part of the ticket. Online. Yes. So, so you you do if you want it, you need to order it as part of your ticket ahead of time. Club members get a discount on both the prefix and on the main ticket. Now, I, I will say club members just got an email from me. If you didn't get it, you should have it in your email box. The uh, the discount on the show is 20%. You get 20% off the show. But we, we can't give the 20% discount on food. So you get a discount on the show and a smaller discount on the food. So if there's a second discount code for the prefix menu that doesn't give you quite as big a discount but it's but it's still yeah well it's a it's a discount on the show and a discount yeah. on the on the wine so there's essentially. one for the ticket and one for the ticket in the show and that's in and an email, email that you just sent out yeah and of course club members if you ever feel like you've missed that email or think that there should be a Calls. discount code or just give us a call yeah. check in send an email to myself or bob and we'll we'll figure out we'll, we'll get you your, your discounts Absolutely. yeah yeah, yeah do join oh us. we're Maybe over last last week benny shoney Oh, my God. oh, that was a show. Oh, mind blowing. He was so much fun. That I, they I were just, a fun he's band. a tenor sax player. He's played oh, all over the world. He God. played here on our stage here in Meredith, New Hampshire. It's, you can't. I, there's no better. You couldn't have a better jazz experience. I don't yeah. care where you want to play. Yeah. And I guess they this were is on fire, and fire. the space is just sucks everybody into the show. It's just it's, it's a great that. experience. Food, wine, yeah. And jazz. and jazz. Yeah. So that's one note. We are, we are over, so we've got to wrap up. But um, so you mentioned, so piano night is now six to nine, Fridays and Saturdays, all through the winter. All winter. But we are switching. Wow. The Thursday night shows starting this week are going to be just every other week. So we've got the fifth and the, the fifth. 19th. But on the alternating weeks, on Tuesday nights, <laughs> we have movie night coming up. 
Ratatouille. Whoa. Our first Ratatouille. one is going to be Ratatouille, which I'm so excited for. <laughs> I think that's one of the things. It, it just tenth. is there. Free that's popcorn? on the tenth. So yes, we will have the kitchen open at the beginning. The kitchen will close once the movie starts. So Travis has got a pared down menu um, that I think actually in talking with schedule that I believe I will be preparing. I think I am our, our Tuesday night cook for movie nights, assuming Bob can be here to pour your wine. We'll check in on that. Um, <laughs> oh, so but, do I have to make reservations? No, nope, you don't have to make reservations. No, um, you just have to come. So the movie's going to start at 630, 6.30. But if you arrive, you know, at 5.30 or 6, then we can get you your food, get you settled in, get you a glass of wine. The movie will start at 6.30. And, and the popcorn, as you questioned, is free. It's free. Uh, but but <laughs> if you're generous and would like to give a donation, we will give all the money that you give in your donation for the popcorn to the Lakes Region. Uh, the Interlake theater. Summer, theater Inter program. Summer Theater Program. So yeah, we've been collecting. We collected money for them last I year as well. I love that program. They make some great music, uh, great shows every summer, all summer long. Beautiful shows, and mm -hmm. and we all know nobody's getting rich on the arts. So they need all the help they can get. So, yeah, so we're glad uh, to support some local yeah. local art and culture is definitely what we're promoting there. So if you're having a bad week, popcorn's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come grab some popcorn, grab some wine. Um, and you can always check in on these events on our website or on our Facebook or Instagram page. We have things posted so you can check in on what's coming up. But we hope so to see everybody. We should finish with, if you liked today's broadcast, <laughs> click here. Right click, here. Like it. Like it on YouTube. Put the thumbs up button on YouTube. Share with your friends. Like it. Share with wine, your friends. Food loving friends. Let's build our audience. Let's let the world know what Chef Travis is making in our kitchen because he's going to do a cooking show with us every four to six weeks. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I think next week. So we will be here next week. I believe, Bob, you're away next week, it sounds I'm away. like. Hey, you know what we're going to do next week? I don't know ben? If ben knows this, but we're going to introduce you. Yeah, I think so. Ben popped in. Ben. Yeah, Ben popped oh. in, but we're going to do a full interview of Ben next week. My, myself and Ken, oh, I've got to set up all this technology. Oh, you're getting good at it. We might have slightly pared down technology and lighting effects next week, but we will be here, <laughs> myself and Ken oh. and Chuck. Uh, what's next week? Monday. Monday. The <laughs> it's, a, it's a Monday. <laughs> Nine. I, so it's as nice. far as I know, I'll be here. Chuck but will I be can here. Take the camera. Chuck will duct tape the camera. Well, we'll be yeah, great. We'll, we'll have Ben here. We'll have a great time. <laughs> All right. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Cheers. 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 Thanks so much. Cheers. My water so glass is empty. I need some oh, no. Yeah, I still have some beer. <laughs> <laughs>